Der Herr sei mit euch. Ich heiße Sie alle ganz herzlich an diesem 11. Sonntag nach Pfingsten willkommen und grüße Sie mit dem Wochenspruch aus dem zweiten Brief des Paulus an Timotheus. Er hat dem Tod den Macht, die Macht genommen und, an, und, und uns das Licht des unvergänglichen Lebens gebracht durch das Evangelium. Good morning and welcome everyone. I need to say this morning that I will be wearing my mask during the whole service today and the reason is not because of COVID but because I lost some teeth yesterday so it fell out of my mouth and my bridge I took a bite of good German bread and a piece of my whole bridge fell out so I've got three a big hole in my mouth and you don't want to see that smile this morning so I will just leave my mask on today and uh, speak as loud as I can and hopefully Peter will help with the volume and we'll be okay. Wir beginnen mit unserem Eingangslied 134, 1 bis 4. Komm, o komm, du Geist.
vergib und alle deine Gebrechen heilt. Der dich dein Leben lang mit seinen Gaben tätigt, wie dem Allah wird, der die Jünger, Jünger, Jünger erneuert. Er hat Mose seine Wege gut getan, den Kindern Israel seine Werke. Moment bitte. Heute ist erste Lesung kommt aus Jesaja 58. Wenn du in deiner Mitte niemand unterjuckst und nicht mit Fingern zeigst und nicht überredest, sondern den Hungrigen dein Herz finden lässt und den Elenden sätigst, dann wird dein Licht in der Finsternis aufgehen und dein Dunkel wird sein wie der Mittag. Und der Herr wird dich immer da führen und dich sätigen in der Diere und dein Gebein stärken. Und du wirst sein, wie ein bewässerter Garten und wie ein Wasserqueller, der es, nie ein, der es nie an Wasser fällt. 
und es soll durch dich wieder aufgebaut werden, was lange Wüst gelegen hat, und du wirst wieder aufrichten, was vor Zeiten gegründet ward, und du sollst heißen, der die Lücken zumauert und die Wege ausbessert, dass man da wohnen könne. Wenn du deinen Füß am Sabbat zurückhältst und nicht deinen Geschäften nachgehst an meinem heiligen Tage und den Sabbat Lust nennst und den heiligen Tag des Herrn geehrt, wenn du ich dadurch ehrst, dass du nicht deine Gänge machst und nicht deine Geschäfte treibst und kein leeres Geschwätz redest, dann wirst du deine Lust haben am Herrn, und ich will dich über die Höhen auf Erden gehen lassen und will dich speisen mit dem Erbe deines Vaters Jakob, den das Herrn Mund hat geredet. Das Wort Gottes. Amen. Heute das zweite Lesung kommt aus Hebräer 12. Denn ihr seid nicht gekommen zu dem Berg, den man anrühren könnte, und der mit Feuer brannte, und nicht in Dunkelheit und Finsternis und Ungewitter, und nicht zum Schal der Posaune und zum Ertönen der Worte, bei denen die Hörer warten, dass ihnen keine Worte mehr gesagt werden, denn sie konnten es nicht ertragen, was da gesagt würde. Und auch wenn ein Tier den Berg anrührt, soll es gesteinigt werden. Und so schrecklich war die Erscheinung, dass Mose sprach, ich bin erschrocken und zitterer, sondern ihr seid gekommen zu dem Berg Sion, <lacht> zu der Stadt des lebendigen Gottes, dem himmlischen Jerusalem, und zu den vielen tausend Engeln und zu der Versammlung und Gemeinde der Erstgeborenen, die im Himmel aufgeschrieben sind, und zu Gott, dem Richter über alle, und zu den Geistern der vollendeten Gerechten und zu dem Mittler des neuen Bundes Jesus und zu dem Blut der Besprengung, Sprengung, das besser redet als Arbeitsblut. Seht zu, dass ihr den nicht abweist, der da redet. Denn wenn jene nicht entronnen sind, die den Abwiesen, der auf Erden redete, wie viel weniger werden wir er trennen, wenn wir den abweisen? der vom Himmel redet. Seine Stimme hat zu jener Zeit die Erde erschüttert, jetzt aber verheißt er und spricht, noch einmal will ich erschüttern nicht allein die Erde, sondern auch den Himmel. Dieses noch einmal aber zeigt an, dass da, was erschüttert werden kann, weil es geschaffen ist. Verwandelt werden soll damit allein das Bleiber, was nicht erschüttert werden kann. Darum, weil wir ein unerschütterliches Reich empfangen, lasst uns dankbar sein und so Gott dienen mit Scheu und Fürcht, wie es ihm gefällt. Denn unser Gott ist ein versehrendes Feuer. Dein Wort ist meiner Fußes Leuchte und dein Licht auf meinem Wege. Das Evangelium kommt aus Lukas 13. Und Jesus lehrte in einer Synagoge im am Sabbat. Und siehe, eine Frau war da, die hatte seit 18 Jahren einen Geist, der sie krank machte. Und sie war verkrümmt und konnte sich nicht mehr aufrichten. Als aber Jesus sie sah, rief er sie zu sich und sprach zu ihr, Frau, sei frei von deiner Krankheit, und legte die Hände auf sie. Und sogleich richtete sie sich auf und pries Gott. Da entwortete der Vorsteher der Synagoge, denn er war unwillig, dass Jesus am Sabbat halte, und sprach zu dem Volk, es sind sechs Tage, an denen man arbeiten soll. 
an denen kommt und lasst euch heilen, aber nicht am Samtag, Sabbattag. Da antwortete ihm der Herr und sprach, ihr Heuchler, bindet nicht jeder von euch am Sabbat seinen Ochsen oder seinen Esel von der Krippe los und führt ihn zu Tränker, sollte dann nicht dieser, die doch Abrahams Tochter ist, die der Satan schon 18 Jahre gebunden hatte, am Sabbat von dieser Fesel gelöst werden. Und als er das sagte, mussten sich schämen alle, die gegen ihn gewesen waren. Und alles Volk freute sich über alle herrlichen Taten, die durch ihn geschahen. Das Evangelium Christi. Wir wollen unsere Glauben mit dem apostolischen Glaubensbekenntnis bekennen. Ich glaube an Gott, den Vater, den Allmächtigen, den Schöpfer des Himmels und der Erde und an Jesus Christus, seinen eingeborenen Sohn, unseren Herrn, empfangen durch den Heiligen Geist, geboren von der Jungfrau Maria, gelitten unter Pontius Pilatus, gekreuzigt, gestorben und begraben, hinabgestiegen in das Reich des Todes, am dritten Tage auferstanden von den Toten, aufgefahren in den Himmel, er sitzt zu Rechten Gottes, des Allmächtigen Vaters. Von dort wird er kommen, zu so richten die Lebenden und die Toten. Ich glaube an den Heiligen Geist, die heilige allgemeine christliche Kirche, Gemeinschaft der Heiligen, Vergebung der Sünden, Auferstehung der Toten und das ewige Leben. Amen. Wir singen unser nächstes Lied, 320, 1 bis 3. Nun lasst uns Gott dem Herrn Dank sagen. Gnade sei mit euch und Friede von Gott, unserem Vater und dem Herrn Jesus Christus. Amen. There's a phrase that people use these days. I don't know how long it's been used, but we use it sometimes. It's called thinking outside the box. Have you heard that? Thinking outside the box. It's very popular over the last few years in the business world in educational settings. Whenever someone is being encouraged to think, out the, think outside the box, what they're being asked to do is to be creative, to consider new ideas that are outside of the old familiar patterns that they're used to, to not be limited to the box, that is the boundaries and the fences that we have over time placed around us. This can be a helpful picture to a point. 
It's not, not a bad idea in itself. Be creative. Think in new ways. Try things you haven't tried before. But there is also a danger with this phrase because it assumes that the box is always a problem, that the box limits us, holds us back, restricts the free, free flow of new ideas. When this happens, the box becomes a bad thing, a chain, a noose, a wall. The box limits and restrains and reins us in, and therefore the boxes should be avoided. But the truth is, Sometimes boxes are necessary and needed. We human beings need limits. And we can't always assume that what is new is always better. And that what is old boxes us in and is always bad. Even in the church, of course, this phrase has shown up, particularly in areas of evangelism and worship and our response to social changes in our world. Of course, the church must always speak, pay attention to and speak to our contemporary world. We certainly aren't called to be unquestioning slaves of tradition or the past. And perhaps more than ever, we are constantly called to rethink and re-examine what we can adapt and change and adjust for the sake of our mission in this constantly changing and hurting and confused world of ours. The church never thrives when it buries its head in the sand. But sadly, I must say that in my 30 plus years of ministry, I have seen congregations make big mistakes by assuming that what is new, what is, new is always better and what is new is always right. Assuming that new is always good, the way to grow, the way to expand, the secret to prosper is to abandon everything that is old, everything that boxes us in and embrace the new. As if the new is the savior and the old is the box that holds us back. And sadly, again, too many congregations have found out the hard way that this is not true. In today's gospel, Jesus confronts the Pharisees on the Sabbath day. They are upset with Jesus because he heals a crippled woman, which nobody would argue against except he did it on the Sabbath day, the day of rest. And that is the day when you're not supposed to work according to the law. And therefore any work, even good work, is forbidden. Now at this point, I could turn this into a very brief sermon. How would I do that? Well, I could just say, you know, today, friends, Jesus thinks outside the box. And the laws, all those old laws about the Sabbath, they are the box. That's the old way, and Jesus thinks outside the box. He throws the law away and establishes a new thing, which is grace and love and healing. Jesus thought outside the box. How about you? Will you do the same? Amen. <laughs> that would be an easy sermon to preach. The problem, though, with such a sermon is that if the law of God is a box, particularly the gift of the Sabbath, this is God's box. God created this box. God invented the law. God gave the law about the Sabbath to Israel as a precious gift. And the Sabbath in particular is a foundational principle of Judaism, and for that matter, Christianity too. In fact, if you look at what our lesson in Isaiah says this morning about the Sabbath, what does it say? Wenn du deinen Fuß am Sabbat zurückhältst und nicht deinen Geschäften nachgehst an meinem heiligen Tage, und den Sabbat Lust nennst und den heiligen Tag des Herrn geehrt, dann wirst du deine Lust haben am Herrn und ich will dich über die Höhen auf Erden gehen lassen. Now doesn't that sound like the box of the Sabbath matters to God? 
Yes, of course. God gave us the Sabbath. God gave us the law because we need the law. We may look smugly down our noses at some of these laws. We may judge them as old-fashioned and outdated. But let's remember why they were given. Many of these laws, of course, don't translate easily to 2022. The law that says there is to be no work, no carrying of things, no lighting fires on the Sabbath, and all the kosher laws about food. They were not given because they were rational or efficient or hygienic or logical. They were given to Israel, as one person has said, so that in conquering one's own self-interest and passions, obedience conferred purity and holiness. The box of the law then was given to form us, to shape us, to make us into the obedient, faithful people of God. And for Jews in particular, this law, this Torah, was, is not a burden, it is a precious gift. Just like any loving parent must set clear boundaries for their children, in a sense box them in for their own sake, so it is with the law of God. We need the good boxes in our life. Or as P.J. Forsyth says famously, if within us we have nothing above us, we soon give in to what is around us. Jesus was a faithful Jew. He loved the law. He taught respect for the law. He lived according to the law. And he said, I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So what went wrong? Why the problem today with the Pharisees? Well, I want to explain a little bit about what happened by sharing with you a lovely old parable from the Jewish tradition. And it's about, um, and I think it'll help us understand how easy it is for us to turn God's good gifts into bad. There is an ancient prayer in Judaism called the Shema. And it begins with the words, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And the Shema is a prayer that is prayed every morning and every night. And there's a story that is told that one day at a synagogue, there arose an argument about the right way to pray this prayer. Half the congregation said, you must stand up while you pray the Shema. This is how we've always done it. No other way is acceptable. It is the tradition. But the other half of the congregation said, you must sit down while you pray the Shema. This is how we've always, always done it. No other way is acceptable. This is the true tradition. So things got very tense between the two sides. People started yelling at each other. Some refused to talk to each other. Neighbors and lifelong friends would accuse and curse and scream at each other. Other people stopped attending worship altogether. The synagogue was in danger of splitting apart. Something had to be done. So it was decided that two elders would visit a wise old rabbi in the village next door and seek his advice. Both sides agreed that they would do whatever the rabbi decided. And when they met him, both sides made their case, the standers and the sitters. And the rabbi listened carefully and then said to the first elder, yes, to stand during the prayer, this is not the tradition. And then he paused a moment and said to the second elder, and to sit during the prayer, this is not the tradition either. And the elders waited and waited, but the rabbi said nothing more. And finally, they cried out, Rabbi, you must help us. We're fighting every Sabbath. All we do is scream and argue with each other. Then the rabbi looked up and pointed to them and said, Now this is the tradition. <laughs> this is the tradition. What went wrong? The Shema is a beautiful prayer to the glory of God. It is not to be a source of division, argument, and rage. This is to bring shame to this prayer. That was the wise rabbi's point. 
One Sabbath day, Jesus comes to a woman whose only name is Vekhumt, bent over. She's the bent over woman, the Vekhumt woman. This is an ugly name. This is the name of shame. And on the blessed Sabbath, the Queen of Days, Jesus holds her hand, he heals her, straightens her out. He raises her up and gives her a new name. He says, you are no longer Frau, but now you are Abraham's Tochter. Abraham's Tochter. Yes, it is true that Jesus did work on the Sabbath. And yes, it is also true that the law says work is forbidden. Let's assume that the Pharisee is not a fool or a scoundrel. Let's assume that he holds a responsible position. He is a keeper of the box, so to speak. He wants to uphold what he understands to be holy. What went wrong? What went wrong that day? Well, God created the Sabbath as the queen of days, God's most precious gift to Israel. The Sabbath is a day for rest, for reflection, for worship, for recreation. The Sabbath is not to be used as a club to prevent grace and healing and compassion from happening. That was Jesus' point. Jesus announces pure gospel to this woman. He gives her not only healing, but she, he gives her a new name, a new identity. Jesus does not abolish the box. He does not step outside the box. Instead, he enters the box with the gospel. He doesn't throw out the Sabbath. He fulfills the Sabbath. He reminds everyone who hears him that the Sabbath is a day of healing, the kind of box God created and intended. Well, how do we bring all of this home? I want to begin by saying that I am thankful for the daily boxes that hem me in as a pastor and as a Lutheran Christian. We are quite firmly boxed in by scripture, by the creeds, by the confessions of our church. And I am thankful that, I walk, that when I walk up these few steps into this pulpit every week, I am not free to tell you whatever I want. I am not free to preach whatever suits me or interests me. No, I have a job. I am boxed in by my baptism. I am boxed in by the authority of Scripture. I am boxed in by the creeds and confessions of our church. And I am boxed in through my ordination vows. These boxes are not burdens, but God's gift to me as a Christian and as a pastor. The problems arise when I try to make my own box or break out of these. As it was with the Pharisees, so it is with us. Religion is nothing more than my system that works for me, a system that I interpret, that I manage, that I direct. That was the problem with the Pharisees and their misuse of the Sabbath law. They had turned the Sabbath into a bunch of rules and regulations that they could manage, but the heart and soul of the Sabbath had been lost. Compassion, healing, restoration, joy, renewal, and new life. It had gotten so bad that on this day, even the wonder of a restored woman was seen as being against God and against faith. The old saying goes, you can't see the forest for the trees. Perhaps we have our religious routines down pat. We come to worship regularly, we give our offerings, we sing the liturgy, we say our prayers at bedtime, we obey the traffic rules, we try not to cheat or lie or steal, we try to keep the Ten Commandments, we pay our taxes, we get along well with most everybody, and this is a system that works for us. But soon we too can overlook and walk by the bent over women in our world, die Verkrumpfrauen, because we've made the box our own because we say, that's not my job, I'm doing my job, that's not part of my system, not required of me. God's holy boxes are a precious gift. They are blessed boxes that always call us back to God, back to scripture, study them. 
Back to our creeds and confessions, learn them. Back to the sacraments, receive them. Back to prayer, humility, sacrifice, and the way of the cross, practice them. These are your holy boxes. These are the practices that will form you into cross-shaped disciples. Yes, these disciplines are not easy. They will cause you to rethink things. They will challenge you and set you on a new course. They will not set you free to do whatever you like. They will bind you to the cross of the crucified one. For God's box is cross-shaped. God's box is cross-shaped. Disciples, we don't live outside the box. We don't build and manage our own boxes. Our box is shaped like a cross given to us in our baptism, and that is the great and good news of this day. We kneel before the cross, we listen, we learn, we pray, we submit, day after day after day, but the work in us is God's work. Through the Spirit's attention and faithfulness, we are shaped and formed, buried and raised again, day after day, until the way of the cross becomes our way, our truth, and our life. Lord, we pray, make it so among us. Amen. In Nama des Vater und des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes. Amen. Heute's Predigtslied ist 406, 1 bis 6.
lasst uns beten. Guter Gott, in der Gemeinschaft mit dir gewinnt unser Leben Kraft und Grund. Du hörst, was uns bewegt. Du weißt um unser Gebet noch bevor wir es aussprechen. Voll Vertrauen kommen wir zu dir. An so vielen Orten erblüht deine Schöpfung in ihrer Pracht. Tiere und Pflanzen lassen das Lob deiner Herrlichkeit erklingen. Lass uns mit einstimmen in den Lobgesang und wecke in uns die Liebe, die mit Achtsamkeit bewahrt, was du geschaffen hast. Wir rufen zu dir, Herr, erbarme dich. Kriegsgeschrei und Waffengeklär sind manche, mancherorts lauter als der Klang von Gerechtigkeit und Frieden. Weise Kriegsherren und Streitmächte in ihre Grenzen, lasst sie den Vollklang der Versöhnung entdecken und tun, was dem Frieden dient, damit niemand mehr leiden muss unter Hass und Gewalt. Wir beten für Frieden in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Israel, Palästina und Korea. Wir rufen zu dir, Herr Barmedik. Wir bitten dich für unsere, unsere Kranken, für Ben Bablitz, Kadira Fraser, Lydia Schienmann, Jay Harold und Gerlind Kussling. Wir bitten dich für unsere Trauenden. Sei ihnen nahe mit deinem Trost. Wir rufen zu dir, Herr, erbarme dich. Wir beten für unsere obdachlosen Nachbarn, die mit so viel zu kämpfen haben, diejenigen, denen wir in dieser Gemeinschaft von Macaulay begegnen und die wir regelmäßig treffen. Wir beten für offene, offene Türen der Sicherheit, Geborgenheit und Freiheit von der Sucht. Wir beten für neue Möglichkeiten und Unterstützung, um ihnen eine Zukunft und eine Hoffnung zu geben. Wir rufen zu dir, Herr Erbarme dich. Nimm dich unserer Bitten an, Gott, den du kennst Wege, wo wir nicht weiter wissen. In deiner Hand befehlen wir alle und alles, wofür wir gebetet haben. Bewahre uns in deiner Liebe durch Jesus Christus, der mit dir und dem Heiligen Geist lebt und Leben schafft in Ewigkeit. Amen. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe wie im Himmel so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlose uns von dem Bösen, denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. Der Herr segne euch und behüte euch. Der Herr lasse sein Angesicht leuchten über euch und sei euch gnädig. Der Herr erhebe sein Angesicht auf euch und gebe euch Frieden. Amen. Setzen Sie sich bitte. <lacht> Guten Morgen. Herzlich willkommen, everyone. Good morning today. I just have a few simple announcements. I want to thank Judy Bauer, who's filling in for us today. And to thank you, Judy, you're becoming a part of our community. You've been here enough, you know the way around. And the Judy today brought us a gift. Her mother, your mother and father, had this. It's a beautiful old book in a box, and it's almost brand new inside. And it's called Gedenkbuch für das christliche Haus. 
It's a book of devotions in German, beautiful old book, and uh, she's offered to anyone who would like it. It's never been used. It's probably close to 100 years old. If you'd like to have it, I'll leave it on the table. I'll have a look at it. If you'd like to take it home, please feel free to do that. So thank you, Judy, for making that offer to us. It's a beautiful piece of, of art. You know, they used to make books like, like artwork in the old days. And uh, so this is available if someone would like to have that. Also, the Gottes für uns devotional books are here. We moved the table. The table's not here. The table's over by the kitchen window. So help yourself to those books. And I think that's all the announcements I have for today. Heute das Ausgangslied ist 331. Wir singen 1 und 2 und 10 und 11. 1 und 2 und 10 und 11. Thank you.